We'll probably get some presents here in a minute. Put that scripture up there for me. Just one scripture. You've never heard me preach in one scripture. I know it's probably two hours. Yeah, give them a hand. He said, Behold, the virgin shall be with child. And shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. With us. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. As a matter of fact, it tells us in John that we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace mm. and full of truth. It also could have been interpreted God one of us. Because he was the word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. And, and he was the high priest that was tempted in all manners as we can be tempted. And he can be touched with the feeling of your infirmities. And the scripture says, we have not a high priest which cannot be touched. Which means he's a high priest that can be touched. It says it in a roundabout way. But he has empathy for what you go through. It's a shame that we kind of wait till this time of year every year to reminisce on all of this. We ought to think about this story on probably a regular basis. I think I told you the story. I had a man 42 years old that was a leader of a motorcycle gang and I won him to the Lord and uh, he was so surprised that Christmas was Jesus' birthday. He'd never heard that in all of his life. Ever, all he'd ever done was partied and carried on and just lived his life as though uh, nothing had happened. Yeah, hold on a minute on them. Oh, thank you. Line them up. All right. And uh, anyway, he was just so amazed at it. And sometimes we go over these things so much that I, I think maybe we might take it for granted. Uh, you know, they're, they're getting a foundation in all of this. They're learning the, the basics of it. Uh, It'll grow in meaning, it'll grow uh, in their understanding of it, and the Spirit of God will rest their heart, and we, know, we don't know what God will do with these lives. That little baby was God who stepped out of glory and clothed himself with this old flesh. Yes. The Creator became the creature. He became one of us. Not only is he with us and one of us, he's for us. Yes. Yes. Matter of fact, the scripture declared that if God be for us, it doesn't matter who and may I say nor what right. is against us. Amen. He was the fullness of the Godhead by the way. In other words, all that could be known about God, all that could be understood about God, all that could be imagined about God was given through Jesus Christ. He is the revelation of the fullness of God. He's the one that had the preeminence. He came before all things. and By Him all things consist. Uh, he, he created all things. He was in the world that He created. Uh, he was one with the ones that uh, he had been there when life was breathed into him. He was there when the man failed. Now, God didn't plan for man to fail, but he had a plan if man failed. You understand that? It wasn't predetermined that man would fail. Adam and Eve didn't have to fail. They could have lived forever. Matter of fact, God loved them enough that when they did sin, that he blocked the way to the tree of life because had they got to it, they would have lived in sin forever. But he made a way that man could be redeemed. Just like he had told Abraham, before the foundation of the earth was ever laid, God had prepared a lamb. Yeah. A lamb without spot, a lamb, with, a lamb without blemish that was going to redeem us from our old nature. When I was born after Adam, I was a sinner by my nature. I didn't get up in the morning and say, I think I'll sin today, I just sinned. That was what I did, that was who I was, that was my nature, it come easy to me. Just 
just acted naturally, that's all. And it come about. But there come a day when God arrested my heart and showed me that I was lost. Until you realize you're lost, you can't be found. Amen. Until you realize you're blind, you'll never see. Until you recognize that you've sinned and come short of the glory of God, you don't have the inkling to call on the Lord to save you. This whole season is not about gifts, even though we give gifts. And the reason we give gifts is because God so loved the world that He gave. Right, right. Gave His only begotten Son. Not only did He give His only begotten Son, but Jesus said, when I get home, I'm going to send you a gift. Yes. I'm going to send you the promise of the Father. And He sent the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And not only did He give us the gift of salvation, the gift of the Holy Ghost, He gave us this book as a roadmap. Yes, indeed. Everything you'll ever need, every answer you'll ever search for, everything that has ever occurred in anybody's life is revealed through this Word. Mm -hmm. Now Jesus was called the Living Word, but there is no difference between the Living Word and the Written Word because when you put this puzzle all together, you get Jesus. Yes. From Genesis to Revelation, it's the yes. story of Jesus Christ. It's the revelation of God through His Son. Amen. He said to Philip, when Philip said, show us the Father, that it suffices us. He said, have I been so long with you? Yet you've not known me. He that has seen me has seen the Father. He wasn't saying I am the Father. He said, I have revealed Him perfectly. I didn't come to do my own will, but I come to do the will of Him who sent me. The words that I speak are not my words, but the words of Him who sent me. He said, the works that I do, greater works than this shall you do because I'm going to my Father. And when I get there, I'm going to send you the power of the Holy yes. Ghost. You'll receive yes. power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you'll be witnesses in Jerusalem and, Je and Samaria and, and Judea and Samaria and in the utmost parts of the earth. Everything that we need that pertains to life, everything that we need to, that pertains to living on this planet, every need you'll ever have of any kind was provided through Him. He provided every need that pertains to life and to godliness. Yes. You want to live right, He'll help you. If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you'll be filled. Amen. If you're willing to let Him do it, He'll separate you yes. from your past and separate you from sin and change your attitude and change your mind and make you a new creature. You don't have to split hairs about who's right about this or that or is this group right or is that group right. What you need to know is that you know that you know that you know that your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life and that if He were to call you by way of the grave or by way of the rapture, you'd hear Him say, Well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of thy Lord that was prepared for thee before the foundation of the earth was laid. In Him was life. And that life was the light of men. Don't let this Christmas season pass you by without taking time to pause and and glorify Him and magnify Him. Yes. You know, there's all kinds of things that people do at Christmas time. Uh, there's things that people get bent out of shape about Christmas. I, uh, years ago, somebody come to me about a Christmas tree. They said, well, in Jeremiah it says they went out and they cut down a tree and they decorated it. And when you bow down to that Christmas tea, tree, you're worshiping. Let me tell you, Jeremiah never seen a Christmas tree because Christmas tree didn't come about till the 16th century. And I ain't ever worshiped a tree yet. But I have worshiped the Lord of Lords, Amen. the King of Kings. And if you want to decorate your house and decorate your tree, just go right ahead. But keep in mind the whole season is not about the tinsel and about the lights and about the... Thank you. Thank you guys for all this. Yes. It is so beautiful. It is so pretty. It, 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 it puts us in the mood and in the mind of remembering this season because it's tradition. There's nothing wrong with tradition. We don't worship tradition. We don't magnify tradition. We're not excited about these gifts as much as we are about the gift of God which is 
eternal life through Jesus Christ. Somebody Hallelujah. say thank God for his unspeakable yes. gift, that gift that he gave us that made us complete and made us whole. Yes. Everything we'll ever need. There's a lot of people worried about their future. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I, this is going to happen. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to live my life as best I can. That's right. Looking into I'm Jesus, going. the author and the finisher of my faith. Hallelujah. And when he calls me, I'm going to go. Amen. And I know I've got a place prepared where the saints abide just yes. over in the glory land. Amen. 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 I don't know what heaven's going to be like. Matter of fact, it says, I had not seen, ear had not heard, neither hath it entered into the hearts of men the things that God hath prepared for them that love Him. Amen. But don't stop there. Read the next verse. The next verse says, but God. Somebody say, but God. But God. Has Amen. revealed it unto us by His Spirit. I have never seen Him with these eyes. I've never heard anything about Him with these ears. But let me tell you, it's real to me. It's more real to me and my salvation is more real to me than tomorrow's newspaper. People talk about wanting to be relevant. Jesus has always been relevant yes. because before Abraham was, I am. Amen. Amen. Yes. Oh, let's give him glory and honor and praise. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if this house had been filled tonight? Well, it's not. But isn't it great that you got to see young people yes. with impressionable minds being trained in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Amen. Now they're being patient and letting me talk, but I tell you they're really excited about what's in these bags.